We're here at an interesting little backyard garden that's going to be an orchard and we're building a privacy fence here and the privacy fence is out of cedar, in this case incense cedar. In this video we're going to show you all the steps to building it. You can save a lot of money by doing it yourself, but I'll tell you how much it costs and how much the material is and um, how much to hire a contractor to do it. So I'll measure the fence because when I give you pricing, you need to know how much it is a linear foot so you can apply it to your own fence. And I have a way of measuring that uh, surprises my employees and they're always double checking me. But it's correct, I step it off and I tell them the key to stepping it off when you're doing it is know that it's right. Do it with confidence and if you do it with certainty that it's correct, you check it and it's right. Uh, maybe we can apply that to other parts of our lives. So it's 146 linear feet of fencing. So you'll need a string line, you'll need a post hole digger, you'll need a level because all of the posts we need to get perfectly leveled. You'll need the lumber, mostly four by fours, two by fours, and actually on the outside some one by twos were used. You'll need some concrete for the holes. You'll need woodworking equipment. We used screws instead of nails. We think that does a better job of attachment. You can probably rent all the tools you need, but they're not expensive tools, they're hand tools. So when you know exactly where the fence is going to go, then you need to mark the posts. You line up the edge of the post with that string line. You have to have a string line that extends from one end to the other. So we have three runs in this case. So we use that string line three different times to create a line that we can put our post right up against and then use a level to level it at the same time. The string line is critical and tools like a level are critical. I think that's one of the important parts of a fence is to make sure it's straight and level. These are eight feet. A standard spacing is eight feet and these are eight feet. In terms of spacing the posts, a lot of it depends on the dimensions of your lumber. If you have big posts and big members that go across, then you can space them a little farther. You're gonna dig them with either a post hole digger or you could use an auger. Good general depth is two feet for the post holes and that's how we installed these. One of the little tricks that I think is important that we always implement is when you use concrete collars in order to stabilize the posts, I prefer not to have that collar encase the post completely and go underneath it. I prefer to just make it a collar and underneath the post is dirt so that if moisture gets between the concrete collar and the post, it doesn't sit between concrete at the bottom and the post, which does cause rot. Let me see how many holes we got one. 25, uh, so we've got about 25 post holes. 44, so, so there's about 22 posts. So correction, we have 22 posts. We used two bags on each post hole, and so we used 44 bags, and uh, we bought them for about $350 altogether. After you put the posts in is the time where you'd get all the tops level by using some type of leveling device, like a line level, and then you just cut them all. We usually make sure the post is longer than we need, and then we go through and level it. So these are six inch pickets, just preference of the owners. And when you buy pickets, a lot of times it's hard to find them without the dog ears. We usually want them without the dog ears, but you can hide them with your cross piece on top if you end up not being able to find anything else or they're a particularly good price. The first part of the frame is the post. Second part of the frame in this style of fence are the three two by fours that connect the posts. Once you have the posts in and your cross members, you just attach the pickets and I'm gonna have Marcelo show you how we did that. So these pickets were an inch from the bottom and uh, that allows for it not to crack and to be properly fastened into the wood below it. 
So for all the frame, we used uh, three and a half inch screws with the impact screwdriver, which is battery powered. You saw Marcelo operating it. And then for the pickets, we used inch and uh, five eighths inch screws. So all of the fence is attached with the impact screwdriver and two different sizes of screws, three and a half for the frame and one and five eighths for the pickets. You can build a fence with both sides looking identical. In this case, we have both sides looking different. So on the inside of the yard, you can see how the fence was built. On the outside of the yard, all you see is the pickets and the top piece but a fence that doesn't show structure on either side is obviously more expensive. The lumber and the screws and everything is about $3,800. Just over $4,000 for all the material for the 146 feet or so. So if you do it yourself, your costs stop there. If you hire a contractor, it's gonna be about eight to $9,000. He or she would buy the material and put it all in and collect from you at the end. The owners are still deciding what they want the finish to be. If you don't use any kind of a sealer or stain or paint, then it keeps changing in color and, you know, eventually looks kind of dreary, although some people might like that look. An important part is make sure you don't throw any water on the fence with sprinklers. In this case, it's gonna be a completely a drip system. No irrigation water will be thrown on the fence. In that way, it'll just weather evenly and you won't have these ugly changes in color where the water hits the fence because that causes quick and extreme discoloration. Another finish that we do that you've probably seen many times on our videos, we use a paint by Benjamin Moore called Dragon's Breath, and it's a color that I call recessive. It's kind of a combination of gray, green, and brown, and makes it so over time, you don't really notice the fence as much, whereas this fence is gonna stand out if they leave it the wood color, it's gonna be prominent. There are a lot of interesting issues when you build a fence. One is what to use for the post, because in order to make a fence long lasting, the integrity and strength and ability to withstand decomposition and rot of the posts is key. The fence that I'm comparing this one to, it's built with exactly the same simple construction. We used pressure treated posts for that purpose. These owners preferred, if the integrity was there of the product, to not use pressure treated because they're thinking of some kind of natural sealant or something as a finish and they want to see the wood and with a pressure treated it would look different than the rest of the wood so we used cedar posts here you can use redwood posts cedar posts or pressure treated posts and you get about the same amount of durability and ability to withstand moisture and such i don't have my phone with me it's out there uh, how much is uh say 8500 divided by 146 so this fence, built by a contractor, about $58 a linear foot. Uh, what's um, 4,200 divided by 146? The material uh, at a little more than $4,000 for 146 is about $30 a linear foot. So you can use that as a guide. I can buy my materials and even maybe a couple tools for $30 a linear foot. So here I'm at the gate. This is going to be two three-foot gates, which will attempt to build in a way that doesn't sag and is durable over time. And this will be the final part of this fence. And this is the final part of our video. Let us know uh, what you think of it. And if you'd like to uh, see how we build the gate, let us know. We'll be doing it soon. There's not many vines that actually grab a fence creeping fig and ivy do, so you could grow those on it. Or you could build some kind of trellis idea, which we've covered in other videos. You can use wire. Most vines would need some kind of help on the fence so that it can twine around something. 